Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso, and today we're going to talk about another new interpretation proposed by the AICPA's Professional Ethics Executive Committee. Uh, and today we're going to talk about unpaid fees. Uh, so this is actually a revised um, ex or a revised interpretation um, as we go through this. So um, the ethics interpretation currently stands, and they're going to uh, provide an update uh, on some maybe some proposed changes here. So this was issued the same time as the um, interpretation proposal related to assisting clients with accounting standards uh, in um, accounting standards implementation, uh, which was September 20th. Uh, comments are due the same date, December 20th. Uh, and the back one on this really is this is another IESBA convergence project to the extent possible. We want to keep the ethics standards relatively similar uh, between the AICPA and IESBA, which is the international items. Um, but also they looked a little bit at the impact of COVID-19 and potentially some difficulties entities might have uh, in making payments during this more difficult time. Uh, so currently we have a very bright lines approach. You have a one year, any dollar, and you are gonna have an automatic impairment of independence. They're looking at a more principles-based approach. So what are the big proposals within here? Um, so again, they plan to remove uh, the reference to an advocacy threat. They don't believe that uh, unpaid fees represents an advocacy threat. So that's something that they're going to make changes to. Um, it also provides a principles-based framework. Again, instead of having a rules-based one year, any dollar amount, uh, they're going to look at it from a size and a significance. Uh, and then they're also going to provide factors, again, to consider when evaluating the threat. So it's not a hard line. It's more of an interpretation. It's a principles-based approach. And then example safeguards. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, this is the markup they're making to paragraph three. The current rule basically says uh, that there's nothing you can do. There's no uh, safeguard that would, if you had any unpaid fees, any unpaid fees uh, from an attest client that had been rendered for services already rendered more than one year, uh, that you would have. Uh, automatically impair your independence and there's no safeguards that could be applied. Uh, as you can see now, they're moving towards a more principles-based approach and they're looking at, well, what about the significance of the fees? What about the, um, you know, what's going on here? And so it says threats to the coverage members' compliance with the independence rule are at an acceptable level. So instead of saying what's not permitted, they're saying what is permitted, when unpaid fees are both clearly insignificant to the covered member and, again, relate to professional services provided less than one year prior to the date. So if it's under a year, clearly insignificant, we're not going to worry about it. However... Threats would not be an acceptable level when unpaid, uh, unpaid fees are both significant to the covered member and relate to professional services provided more than one year prior. Uh, so clearly in that scenario, they're not acceptable if they're large and they're really overdue. Then they say there's some judgment. Uh, other situations may be where it's not large, but it's more than a year, or it's really large, but less than a year, where you would have to assess the threats to independence. And they give us some factors uh, that to consider. Obviously, the significance of the fees to the member, uh, how long the fees have been outstanding, again, so size and time, but also the likelihood that the fees will be paid, right? So thinking about our history with the entity, uh, what we know about the operations as we're doing our current year work, and then the uh, potential effects that we'll have on the auditor's objectivity. And again, we always not look at just uh, independence in mind, but also in appearance, the appearance of the auditor's ability to maintain independence here. So again, uh, when we take a look at this, they're really trying to say, okay, use a common sense threats and safeguards approach. So if you identify a threat, you say, okay, it's not clearly at an acceptable level. Maybe it is, um, you know, it's uh, you know, been outstanding for some time now, but it's not super significant. We have a bunch of safeguards. Uh, so if we conclude that threats are not an acceptable level, we would need to apply safeguards just like we would normally do. Uh, and so in this scenario, uh, in this examples that they provide, have an appropriate reviewer who had not provided the uh, test or non-attest service to review the work um, at the um, before the current year test report is issued, obtain partial payment if we could to again reduce the size, agree to a payment schedule before the report is issued, select current engagement for pre-issuance or post-issuance review, um, maybe suspend current work until, uh, you know, and not accept anything new until they can get to a clearly insignificant amount and communicate with low charge of governance regarding those unpaid fees, right? So they're gonna give us some options here. Um, so this is a big departure from what we're currently doing, uh, currently a you know, very bright line approach here. And so they're asking for your feedback. 
Uh, in terms of when would this be effective, it is proposed to be effective six months after the notice is published in the Journal of Accountancy and early adoption would be permitted. Um, so that would be the concept again, just like any other ethics interpretation, when does it show up in the Journal of Accountancy? That's usually the starting point for notification. All right, so that's a wrap today. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the General Learning Blog, and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.